Fade out one. Fade in three. Pizza Flicks Television Division presents Suspense. feeling when I woke up was something was going to happen. Oh, Joe, you're tired. You work too hard. I'm in danger. I couldn't get it out of my mind. Funny how I imagine things in the middle of the night. I kept worrying about you and Kathy. Darling, we're in our own house in the midst of the city. All respectable people are in bed. There are some who aren't. Out there at night, shadows. Joe, you had a bad dream. That's all. I guess you're right. Silly, isn't it? As a matter of fact, Dr. Parker. Mommy! Mommy! Kathy, why aren't you asleep? I had a bad dream. Oh, uh, Daddy! Now, now, Joe. Young lady, you're going right back to your trundle bed. Mommy, tell me a story. Not now, Kathy. Darling, Mommy and Daddy are right here. Nothing's going to happen. I have two babies tonight, both with bad dreams. Now, you go back to sleep and dream about the sandman. Helen, is she on? Sound asleep. Just as soon as she hit the pillow. I suppose you want a story, too, Dr. Joseph Parker. Nightmares at your age. What would your patients think? Good night, darling. Good night. Doorbell. I've got the jumps tonight. Let them ring. Oh, it sounds as though they mean it. Someone may need you. Oh, I'm not going. All right. <laughs> Ellen, why wasn't I a plumber? You could still get calls in the middle of the night. Just a minute. Oh, all right, Kathy. Just a moment, darling. I'm coming. You're the doc? Like it says on the door? Yes, I'm the doctor. Sorry, Doc. Emergency. I'm a private physician. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. The city's full of hospitals. Doc, you see what I mean? I think I do. We've got a fellow outside. He's hurt bad, Doc. I'd like to have you take a look at him. Right now. All right, bring him in. No tricks, Doc. Remember about that. I'm asking you nice. No tricks. Don't worry about me. I'm no hero. Check. I have a wife and child. Okay. Bring him in. Careful. Take it easy. Take it easy. Oh, Zick. Zick, he's really hurt. No names. Give her a hand, Doc. You're let me have him. It's 
this all about? What happened? Don't ask questions, Doc. Just take it from here. Get his jacket off while I clean up. You hear that? Help with his coats. Ooh! Oh. What are you doing? I can't get it off. Here, let me do that. Here. I told you, no name. I'm sorry. I forgot. Next time, don't forget. <clears throat> Bullet, wasn't it? What do you think? It's in bad shape. It's gone around the lung, maybe pissed. Needs an operation. Okay. So you operate? You're crazy. This is no place. He needs a hospital. Anesthesia, x-rays, if there's time. I'm not asking you, Doc. I'm telling you. Joe! Is there anything I can do? Uh, no, Ellen. Go back to bed. Well, what was it? A patient. Don't come in, Ellen. Go back upstairs. Oh, darling, what's wrong? I'm coming in there. There's been an accident. It's all right, Ellen. Please. Joe, I'll help you. I I'm a registered nurse. Ellen, will you do as I say? All right, Joe. Stay right where you are, lady. Joe. So we got a nurse in the house, huh? I don't want to make it easy for you, Doc. Don't be a fool. He needs more than a nurse. He's been shot. The chances of an operation. They ought to get into a hospital. We're not leaving the premises, and you're doing the operating. Tell him, lady. I never questioned the doctor's diagnosis. He's doing it anyway. You know how, don't you, Doc? Of course I know how. All right, get started. Quit acting so big. Look, I told you I'm no hero, but I'm a doctor. And I tell you very certainly, if I tried to operate here, he could die just like that. No. No, Sig. Sig, listen. Maybe we'd better take him to a hospital, huh? You're crazy? How long did we last? No, no. Couldn't we just leave him there? Shut up. Why don't you leave him here? Go ahead. Get out. As soon as you've gone, I'll call an ambulance. We're not leaving him anywhere. What difference does it make to you? He's just another hoodlum. Take it easy, Doc. He means more to me than you do or your wife here or her. So you better fix him up good. This is no common hood. He's my kid brother. Your brother? Yes, lady, and I need him. So I'm going to see that he gets a break. Anybody else, I'd have thrown right out of the car. You never gave him a break in his life. If it wasn't for you, he wouldn't be like that right now. You want some more? Go ahead, I don't care. Vince was all right till you started to work on him. We both were. Oh, Zig, why couldn't you let us be? Look at us. Like tonight. Who took the rap when the cops started shooting? Not you, you ran for the car. Vince. Vince, he was the... He got it instead of me, that's all. Instead of you, sure, yeah. instead of you. Oh, Vince. Are, are you and Vince? I'm his wife. He hates me. Mommy, where are you? Kathy. Kathy. Hello, Mommy. You got the paper? Darling. Go upstairs. I'm not sleepy. Mommy, can I see you? Look, honey, Daddy's busy. Do as Mommy says. Hello. I'm Kathy. Who are you? Are you a friend of Daddy? Sure. Sure, kid, I'm a friend. Mommy, tell me your story, will you? Not now, Kathy. Well, you must go back upstairs to bed. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Kid, come here. Come here, I'll tell you a story. What about the baby? Kathy, man? I'll take care of her, Doc. You'll be busy taking care of him. You're going to operate, remember? I told you, I won't do it. There isn't one chance in a hundred. You'll do it. You wouldn't want anything to happen, would you? You wouldn't. Yeah, he would. Like blowing out a match, I see. He don't care for nothing. You better take your chances, Doc. Get at it. If you care anything for this kid, you better fix him up good. I can't perform miracles. Well, you better. In this case, you just better perform a miracle. Ellen, I'll need help. Please. Easy, Vince. Take it easy. Well, it's down around the lung. Maybe Pierce. Straight emergency. X-rays, Joe? We have no time. Anesthesia? Equal. It's all we've got. Keep giving it to him while I'm working. Enough to hold him under. Strap him? You'll have to. The story! Huh? The story you promised. Oh, sure. Once upon a time, there were 
two or three bears. Not two, uh, just three. Mama, Papa, and Little Bear. Okay, okay, three bears. Ziggy, uh, Ziggy, if anything happens to Vince... Quiet, three bears. The Mama Bear, Papa Bear, and the Little Bear. Is there any hope? I said one chance in a hundred. Now, Ellen, eat it. Please, God. Just a moment, we'll see the second act of tonight's suspense story, I'm No Hero, starring Hume Cronin. But right now, during this brief intermission, I... Hey, what's that? What's going on here, anyway? Why, it sounds like another chaser. Why, yes, indeed, there's Danny the Dip, and it looks like he's leaving with the loot. Yep, there's his getaway car, he jumps in, hits the starter, and he's off in a flash. Ah, but he won't get far, because there's Clancy the cop right behind him, ready to go in fast pursuit. Uh-oh, seems that Clancy's not going anywhere, because his battery's gone dry, and it's completely dead. <laughs> well, friends... It looks like Clancy the cop has learned the hard way that one of the major reasons for battery failure is extreme loss of water. Yep, and that can cause a dry, dead battery just like the one he has there. Now, what he should have had, of course, is the world-famous Autolite Stay Full battery. This, you know, is the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Now, let me show you why. You see, in the ordinary battery, small particles keep flaking off the positive plates. So, the ordinary battery has to have a large space in the bottom of the case to hold those particles, otherwise they'll get together and short-circuit the cells, just like you see them doing right there. But there's a big difference in the new Autolite Stayful battery. In the Stayful battery, every positive plate has a fiberglass retaining mat protecting it, holding the active materials in place. You see, there's the fiberglass, the feature that gives a real advantage to the Autolite Stayful battery. Now, Whereas the ordinary battery requires this much extra space below the plates, the Autolite Stayful doesn't need all that extra space. So we can take the extra space and use it to advantage by putting it up above. Now, if we put electrolyte in both batteries, you see there's space left up above for extra water. But you also see an ordinary battery holds only this much extra water right there, while the Autolite Stayful battery holds over three times as much water right there. That gives you over three times the liquid reserve of ordinary batteries. And that's why you have to add water to your Autolite Stayful battery only three times a year in normal car use. Say, here's another fact that you should know about. In tests conducted according to the life cycle standards of the Society of Automotive Engineers, the Autolite Stayful battery was found to give 70% longer average life than batteries without the Stayful features. Yep, it's a fact. So why don't you take my advice and enjoy the extra assurance of having an Autolite Stay Full battery. The battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Well, sir, we rushed a new Autolite Stay Full over to Clancy's car, and this time he was really off in fast pursuit. As in jig time, he caught up to the runaway robber, and Danny the Dip was in a real dilemma. Yes, sir, Danny learned a lesson he'll never forget. You're always right with Autolite. Now, the second act of our suspense story, I'm No Hero, starring Hume Cronin. is entirely competent. You're the doc. Take a look at him. I have looked at him 50 times. 
doesn't it mean as much to me as it does to you? No, Doc, it don't. Next to him in there, your kid don't mean anything. Not a thing. What do you think of that? All we can do is wait. Don't answer it. Maybe a beat. I said don't answer it. Please, can I no, take lady. Her to no, lady. But she's she's my insurance. You get the idea? Zig, Zig, let her have the kid. Who asked you? Oh, the doctor is. What? You got your gun? What are you afraid of? I'm just not taking any chances, that's all. Besides, I... I'm kind of enjoying this. Enjoying? Yeah. I got the drop on you, Doc, all the way around. I, I kind of enjoy having the drop on people. You didn't you always have the drop, as you call it, did you? What do you mean? It's pretty plain, isn't it? Just look at yourself in the mirror. So, I'm a runt. So sure, I used to get pushed around by everybody when I was a kid. I wasn't like Vincent there. He was a big guy. A big guy in all muscle. But I got brains, Doc. That's how me and Vince worked it out together. His muscle, my brains. Vince never wanted any part of this. You broke him down. Think you're rough. Oh, listen to the chippy. I'll handle you later. Nobody pushes me around now, Doc. Not you, cops, dames, nobody. Not as long as I got this and him in there. Quit walking around, you give me the jitters. Sit down. How much longer do we have to wait? We gotta get out of here. How long, Doc? I can't tell you. We'll take him now. Drive the car easy. Zig, Zig, let's do like the Doc says, huh? How do I know he isn't trying to pull something? You aren't trying to pull something, are you, Doc? Come on. We're gone. What's wrong with that head of yours? You'll kill him if you move him now. You'll have a hemorrhage within two blocks. What do you mean, hemorrhage? He'll bleed to death. Oh. You didn't do it right, huh? Yes, I did it right, but you don't patch up a man the way you do a tire. There are rules to follow. Surgical rules. Like what? First, the excision of all tissue along the, the wound track. Legation of arteries to control hemorrhage, the proper use of sulfur drug to prevent sepsis, the immobilization of the patient, rest, treatment for shock, watching every minute for a sudden loss of blood. Suppose he needed a transfusion. Anything he needs, you'll see he gets. You wouldn't be trying to frighten me, would you, Doc? I'm just giving you the hard facts. What you do with them is up to you. You know something, Doc? I don't like you. Oh! Oh! Shake some of the wind out of me. Talks too much. Go on, go on. Go in there, get him ready. Go on. All right, old. Better have another look. Are you all right, Joe? What do you think? Pulse and respiration a little stronger. He shouldn't be moved. Joe, what you said upstairs before. About people in the shadow. I know. It's a psychopathic case, Ellen. Dangerous and unpredictable. Isn't there anything we can do? wait and see. Joe! <laughs> what are you whispering about? You remember what I told you about tricks, Doc? Not even a little one. Joe, we seen the lights. Who's great? Policeman on the block. You better go and answer him. Call. Tell him you'll be right there. In a moment, Grady. Babe, you watch the kid. You sit down and don't try anything crazy. I'll be right with you every minute, Doc. So just watch every move you make. Hi, Doc. Just that I saw the lights in the car outside, I was wondering if yes, I could... Yes, thanks, uh... Grady. It's a patient. It's all right. Fine time of the night. I guess it's no cinch being a doc. You get a lot of false alarms. Well, this you? one was no false alarm. It's getting late, doc. This is Mr. Uh, a friend of the patient. How are you? Uh, was the bullet, was it, doc? Bullet? Why? Well, there was a holdup in a hotel downtown. They killed a night watchman. But one of them got winged on a getaway. Who uh, did it? Two men and a woman. They went in as guest in evening clothes. What'd you say your name was, mister? I didn't, but my name's Henry. 
Henry Campbell. Live in the neighborhood? No. I live further up. That's your car outside, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's my car. Mind if I see your patient, Doc? Uh, not now, Grady. He's in pretty bad shape. Something on your mind, officer? No. Nothing. Well, I guess I'll be going, Doc. What's your hurry? Just where are you going? Back on my beat. Where else? Oh! <laughs> Nobody pushes me around. Killed him. It was him or me, wasn't it? Where do you think he'd have gone? If I let him out of here, right to the nearest police box. You, pick up his gun. We better get out of here, those shots. Not without Vince. How is he? Stay. Ah, we... We stay, then. Babe, lock the door. I could do with some coffee. Where's your kitchen? In back. All right, let's go. Go on. Come on, kid. No, leave her. Not a chance. Come on, come on with me. Wait. Don't. You heard Kathy. Like the way Vince looks. He's gone. Hart couldn't take it. I knew it couldn't. Joe Cassidy. Your coffee in this place? Huh? Where's the coffee? It, it's right into the second shelf. Come with me and I'll show. What's going on here? How's Vince? He's all right. I've been watching. Him. How all right? <laughs> You're all right, huh, honey? Yeah. It's Zig, honey. He wants to know. What? I can't hear you, Vince. You have to talk louder, honey. Oh, sure, honey. We'll be leaving soon. Go to sleep, Ben. That's it, honey. Go to sleep. Joe! Let me talk to him. No, let him alone. He's better. Ben, What did they do to you? He's dead. Dead, huh? I warned you from the first. Get that kid. No. Do what I tell you. No. no. Bring her here. What good will this do you? We're getting out of here, taking her with us. That'll keep your mouth shut and give us time. We need an hour. What will you do with it? Maybe we'll phone and let you know. How could we trust you? You can't. That's the nice part about it, Doc. You'll just have to sit here, keep your hands off the phone, and wait. Sit, what about him? He's no good to anybody now. We're saving our own skin. Watch him, Doc. Keep her quiet. I can't. I don't know how. No. You're not good for anything, are you? Just like I told Vince when he married you. Give her to me. I'll shut her up. Get out of here. I'm not touching you. Oh, see.